there welcome to my channel my name is linda i've got some fun crafts coming your way i also have a few free 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 i do it every time <laughs> i have a few sweet friends who's going to be joining me today i'll share those details a little bit later so what are we waiting for let's get started Today we'll be working on some fabric farmhouse home decor Christmas crafts, so let's get started with project number one. For this project, I'll be using this fabric, plaid fabric I got from Hobby Lobby, and this is a blanket that just came out with all the Christmas stuff at Walmart, a sweater blanket. It was about $20. It's actually like a throw, like one of those 60 by 70 inch or 50 by 60, I don't know. But I got it because I thought it's going to be great for Christmas crafts. It'd be great for like making pumpkins in the fall, that kind of thing. Totally worth the money. Actually, I got two. So pillow size here. You'll cut two pieces at 13 and a half inches tall and at 22 inches long. For the pattern, I'll have a link in my description box to my blog for the patterns and printables today. I've made two. One is the mitten and the cuff in one, and then one is the mitten and cuff separate in case you want to do two different fabrics, okay, where I'm just going to use the one sweater blanket fabric. So I'm going to use the the pattern that's all one piece. And what I'm gonna do on this blanket, I like this one area looks like a cuff here. So I'm gonna lay my pattern so that it gets that part for the cuff. You could do it like on a sweater, especially if you have a big enough sleeve, use the cuff as the cuff on the mitten. And I'm just gonna lay my pattern so that the cuff is at the bottom of this part for the cuff. Now, when I cut this out, what I did is I doubled the cuff part on the pattern. And I know it's not that way on the pattern, but I couldn't make it fit on the paper. That way I could just fold it over. And so if you wanna do like a single layer mitten and make the cuff longer at the top and fold it over, it looks like a nice thick cuff but what I'm going to do is kind of double layer mine and so it's all going to lay nice and flat and level but hindsight I actually wished I wouldn't have done a double mitten part the cuff I'm good with but because of the the fabric main pillow is a little bit thinner and so doing a two layer for this because of this sweater blanket is so thick it just looked a little bit too thicker for the pillow, but I still like it. But anyway, uh, that's what I did on the cuff is all the way up, leave that extra at the top, just doubled it so that I could fold it over. Now that would be cute. And then just do a single layer on the mitten part. See, I can fold it over here like this and then just kind of cut off that excess. So that's how I doubled that portion there and made it work. Hope that's understandable. Probably better to watch. Okay, now here's my two pieces together. I'm going to use some crochet thread. You can get this at Walmart and a doll needle because they have a larger eye opening. Those of you that are gluers, definitely uh, hot glue or Fabri-Tac glue. You can just glue your mitten together. All right, if you're doing double layers, all right, especially if you do like a double layer on the cuff area, but just glue it all together. If you're doing like one piece of fabric for the bottom and one for the top and you don't need to glue anything, you can just wait till we get to the part where you glue it to your pillow. Okay, so I want to take a needle and uh, with that crochet thread around it, I'm going to glue my cuff down and glue my uh, mitten, the double layers all together so it holds it in place. And then I've got my crochet thread through my needle, of course, with the knot at one end. And I'm just going to do some really simple, just straight stitches around the perimeter of my mitten. Now the holes, like the, what do you want to call it? The texture of this blanket is pretty uh, thick, but holy. So I didn't pull that knot all the way through at the back where I started. I just kind of glued it in place because otherwise that knot's just going to pull right through the fabric. Is that understandable? And so what I'm doing is I do my stitches and I'm going around each piece separately. So I'm doing the mitten part by itself. So it looks like a mitten by itself. And then I'm coming up to the top and doing the cuff by itself. So it looks like two separate pieces as I do the stitches. You don't have to do that, but I thought it would kind of differentiate uh, between the mitten and the cuff since I'm only using like one fabric through the whole thing. So that's why I'm doing it this way. And then I'll do the other one off camera. Now you could also do like a contrasting thread, but I kind of wanted it to stay subtle and also be neutral so that it matched the uh, you know fabric color of my main pillow. Now, those of you that are gluers, a fabric glue or hot glue gun, I love Beacon Fabri-Tac glue. There's two options here, whether or not you use buttons. If you don't use buttons, you're going to go along 
like I usually go both sides, the top, and then along the bottom, I'll glue about three quarters of the way and leave about a quarter of that open for stuffing, but you can do that anywhere along on your pillow. If you're going to use buttons, the buttons are gonna go about an inch in, but we actually want to glue or so, that's coming about two inches in. And I know this is gonna be weird, but stay with me on this. It kind of looks cool at the end. So if you're a gluer, you're going to glue at the top. You're going to glue like three quarters at the bottom with your opening or wherever you want. <laughs> Make sure you leave an opening for stuffing. And then when you come in to glue, you're going to come in about two inches in on the right and left side and glue down two inches in. Okay. I'm going to pin mine, take it to the sewing machine. And then once it's done sewn, you gluers are kind of be able to see with my thread how it's sewn what it would look like if you glue it okay so i'm coming in here of course and sewing you can see i'm sewing two inches in on the sides here and then on the edges i come the long edges i come about a half inch in okay so it's about a half inch seam allowance right and I'm working with my Viva sewing machine. I'll have links down below for you. Uh, the sewing machine is very powerful. I'm still getting used to it, but I do love it. And I think it's worth the inexpensive cost that it is. Those of you that might be looking for a sewing machine, it's very lightweight, has lots of stitch options. I'll have information down below for you, affiliate links, and the video where I showcase this machine if you, you know, may be looking for something. So once it's done sewn, this is what it looks like. So gluers, as you see the sew lines here, that's how your gluing's going to look like in between the two layers of fabric. Of course, leave an opening there to stuff. I can't say that <laughs> enough. And then just stuff it as full as you want it. And then once you're done, gluers, you glue your opening closed and sew or sew your opening closed. I do mine off camera. So here it is all done and ready to go. I've got my opening closed here. And now we're going to go with the buttons. There's two options of buttons because I know some of you are glue you still love to hand sew but some of you that don't want to hand sew your gluers there's options so you can either thread your button like this and i use crochet thread here and then you would just glue your buttons into place and then once we glue the buttons into place we're actually going to glue between the two pieces of fabric behind the button so it looks like the two pieces of fabric are sewn together with a button is that understandable so like here's what it would look like you glue that down glue your button into place right behind on your button glue that and push the two pieces of fabric together now whether you're a gluer or a sewer you like to hand sew we're going to go ahead and add our button to the fabric we're going to sew through the first layer of fabric only okay and there's a reason for this number one we're just trying to kind of give a facade that you know we our creation of our pillow it's all buttoned together okay i don't know how else to say that and number two we want to hide the knot on the back of the button see that knot there we don't want that to show so get your button sewn into place knot it off cut off the excess of your thread right so that's what i'm doing here and then see we want to hide that we don't want that on the back side it would look tacky so that's the way we're sewing it through the first layer and then we'll glue it together right just like that. So those of us that sew, just sew through the first layer only. Now I've got all three buttons on and I'm adding Fabri-Tac glue behind the three buttons. And don't go past your buttons, just on the three buttons. And then I'm gonna press my fabric together. Okay, and now it gives us the illusion that it's all you know sewn together. Both layers are sewn together, but they're not. Okay, and this is just a design option just to give us something a little bit more on the pillow. So you totally don't even have to do buttons on the pillow, basically. All right, I've got everything laying into place here. All right, I've got my, uh, it's big twine I get at Walmart and I just kind of laid it on in the, you know, curly fashion that I want it. And I'm now going ahead now and glue my mittens down into place right over the edges of those twine. You can make that twine as long as you want. You can place your uh, mittens as cattywampus as you want, as however you want to do this part. Okay. We'll glue the rest of that twine down in a minute. But first, before we do that, what I want to do is I've got some homespun fabric here that I picked up at Walmart and I just ripped it into one inch strips and then about a five or six inch length. I'll do two of those. And we're just going to make just some cute little, you know, a little half knot bow with the top of our mittens underneath that twine. That's why we haven't glued it down yet. 
All right, just put it right up under there, just a little half knot or however you can do a full knot if you want. And I'm gonna go ahead and glue that fabric kind of onto that twine so it stays into position as well. And then just kind of get it how I want it arranged, get the tails how I want it arranged on there. Just gives us a little color, perfect. And then once that's done, then we'll move into go ahead and gluing our twine down. And I glue the whole thing down, okay? I don't just kind of spot glue it. I just glue the whole thing right into place how I want it to lay. As I say, all wrinkly and crinkly, although this isn't really crinkly, but it is wrinkly. So we could glue it down. And you can even add like a little loop there if you want. I almost did like a little loop-de-loop -loop, uh, with that twine. Okay, so I wanted to add just a little bit more on the mitten. So I took that same fabric and I just freehanded a heart. And I'm doing two layers per heart because that uh, fabric is a little bit thin. And then to kind of bring in the stitching like we did on the mittens, I'll glue those two hearts down. Those of you who are gluers, you can just glue them down and leave them. But I'll glue them down and then I will just add some basic stitches uh, right on top with that crochet thread and I'm just stitching it to the glove. That glove is thick enough, uh, you know, and it could go through the pillow if your glove wasn't that thick. It doesn't matter if your mitten, I guess. These are mittens, not gloves. Uh, if your mitten wasn't thick enough, but just adding some stitches basically is what I'm trying to say in the last three minutes of my speech here. And I'll do it on both hearts because I just think it adds a little something, gives it a little bit of a country twist. And you could even just do like, Sharpie marker, paint pen, white paint pen, if you want to draw some stitch lines on your heart or something like that, or if you want to use black Sharpie marker, paint pen, that kind of thing, if you are not a sewer, would be just as cute. Now, once I get all this done and into place, that will make this project complete. Let's see which talented ladies are joining me in today's collaboration. Today I'm coming in with Patty, who is Patty J. Good, Emily, who is Farm Charm Chic, and Wendy, who is White Sparrow Living Loot 126, to bring you some holly jolly Christmas crafts just for you. If you remember right, we collaborated back in uh, July with our Christmas in July collaboration, so we wanted to make sure we came together for an actual Christmas at Christmas time collaboration, although we still are a few months early, but I still think it counts. <laughs> I'll have a link down below in my description box and pinned in my comments so you can click on that link, which will take you to a playlist where all of our videos are together. So grab a holly ho ho snack, a jolly beverage, settle in, and let's get our DIY on. Let's move on to project number two. For this project, I've got a pattern for you. It's similar to a snowman we've done before, but a little bit different, and it's gonna come in two pieces. All right, so you've got a snowman top and a snowman bottom. Of course, there's dash lines that you're going to cut and then tape them together. And there's two design options, and we're gonna work both of those simultaneously today. So you can cut two out of the same fabric to make your snowman, or cut one front and one back that's a little bit different. And then your back piece will actually be about a half inch larger. So here I just use fleece. I cut two of the same out of the one pattern for this uh, particular snowman. And you could use like a batting if you wanted. For this other snowman, I picked up a bunch of different like old, like holy worn quilts and 
things that had texture on it, like this fabric, wool blankets at like a show called The Great Junk Hunt. I don't know if you guys have seen that. So the front of my blanket's gonna be that textured fabric, the blanket. The front of my snowman is gonna be that texture fabric that I cut directly from the pattern. And then I used the pattern, laid it down, and I just cut out about a half inch away from the pattern edge for my back piece. Okay, so if you're a gluer and you're going with like the same two pieces of fabric together, go ahead, start anywhere you want on here and glue it about three quarters of the way, but leave somewhere an opening for stuffing, okay? If you're going to do like this particular snowman, I wanted it to kind of look quilted and I so I have this batting I got off eBay I'll have a link down below it's 100% cotton batting it's an inch thick it's easily able to like you can see here I can pull it apart so it's about a half inch thick sews through very wonderful for using a sewing machine so I have a bunch of pieces here that I'm piecing together because they're leftover pieces but you could cut it in one chunk and I'm going to glue it to start out with to my fabric. So I cut enough to make it fit the top piece of fabric. Now, if you don't want to do this look, you could just put it together like we're doing the other snowman and stuff it with regular stuffing. Okay, this idea is a little bit different. I'm anxious to hear if any of you actually like what I came up with. I know it's kind of out there, but bear with me. And what I my idea came from, I found this is like a store-bought quilt that I cut up. Uh, because I like when you cut it up and you can see the batting and stuff on the inside. So that's kind of where my inspiration came from. Okay, so again, I know it's different. Bear with me, but let me know in the comments if you kind of like this idea or not. So what I'm going to do is since I'm in pieces, whether or not I was in pieces, I'm going to go ahead and start uh, gluing my top snowman here to my batting so that all my batting stays together. You don't want all the pieces falling out. Okay. And then I will go ahead and flip this over and then I'm going to add some more glue on the back side and then get it glued to my back piece, which again is just an old wool blanket. Okay. And I'm going to sew around the edges. If you're a gluer and don't want to sew, you could hand stitch around it, which would be really cute, or you can just glue it together. Okay. Now for my seam allowance, I'm actually sewing in about three quarters of an inch. I originally started it about the normal quarter inch seam allowance or so, but I wanted my batting to be pushed out a little bit more. So, and luckily I hadn't sewn that far when I noticed it. So I kind of took it out and redid it. And by going in about three quarters of an inch or so, it helped to kind of push that batting out to the edge a little bit more. And you may not want that look. That's kind of up to you. Okay. And yes, I am on my old sewing machine for this particular one I hadn't sewed with this batting yet I am using a size 14 needle by the way which is going wonderfully through that kind of thick wool blanket and this textured fabric so you might want to go up a needle plus the thickness of that batting but I do love that Viva sewing machine, but and I have other projects that I have cut out and have it sewn with, but I'm used to how this machine operates and runs. And so for the first time, because of using this particular combination together, I just wanted to work with what I'm comfortable with. So nothing against that other machine. Anyway, this is just about done, and then we'll see how it looks here. All right, so this is what we've got. I know we're not taking a complete upright look at it, but what I wanted to do, uh, because my batting's kind of pieced together, I wanted to just glue it down around the edges where it's not sewn so that it stays into place. But you can kind of see how that sewing looks. And by going in about three quarters of an inch at well, it really gives it a nice quilted look. When this is done, I'm going to set it aside. We're going to go back and forth on these snowmen, okay? Going to work them simultaneously, like I said. I've got this one all sewn. So you gluer or sewer, if this is the one that you like best, the design you like best, go ahead once that's done and get it stuffed as tight as you want it. And then glue or sew your opening clothes. Okay, now this next step, I do this all the time and I gotta figure out why didn't I do this before I did that? So we need to do some eyes. Put your eyes on before you sew your pieces together, okay? Take it from me. So what I'm doing is just marking with a marker where I want my eyes to set and I cut some noses just freehand out of some fabric and I get this fabric at it's Walmart or Hobby Lobby. I think it's Walmart. Um, and what I have to do since I did not get my eyes on first either snowman before we glued or sewed it together is now we have to kind of try and hide where we go in at and where we come out at by sewing our eyes on. Now you could use Sharpie marker or like paint pens and just draw them on. But if you want to use some beads 
or something like that, like I'm going to do here and a needle and thread. Now we have to hide everything. So I'm actually going to come in between the layers of the batting and that fabric. And it's a really kind of small size diameter needle and then come out where that I marked the opening for the eye. Okay. That thread where it's knotted at the end, we're going to hide that. Expertly, it's going to look like we did the eyes ahead of time all the time. <laughs> and then I'm going to add my bead to the thread and then come back through and pull tight and pull my needle up out the top. And you could go across to the other eye because I actually do that on the other snowman, but I didn't on this one. Then I'm going to come back in from that top up there and bring my needle out through the opening where I marked it for the other eye. Put the bead on and then come back right close to that bead and back through the fabric up and out the top and making sure you don't come out through the back of that fabric either. You're just going right in between the layers. Pull it nice and tight so you kind of get a little bit of a quilted look there. And then just tie it off. Just come in there and find kind of your last little stitch or whatever and tie a knot and tie it off. And then we'll cut off the excess. And then we're just going to move that batting around and cover that knot. So it doesn't look like Linda forgot again and then kind of glue that fabric down at the top and no one knows the wiser. Doing the same thing on the other snowman because again, I forgot. Like I said, you could use a Sharpie marker, paint pen, draw your eyes on, however you want to do it. I'm going to again come through the top and just slide that needle down in there. It'll be easy to do if you sewed too. Now that knot, again, we'll cover it. Add my bead to it. Come back through in the same place, right close to where I came out to put that bead on. See, this time I'm going straight across to the other eyeball. And then add the other bead. And then go back in right close to where I came out at. And then bring it right back up through the top, making sure I don't come out the front or the back of the fabric there. Pull it up and pull it nice and tight. And again, just tie it off. Grab a little stitch there, tie it off. Cut off the excess. And then we're just going to glue that part closed. And again, nobody knows the wiser that we forgot to do it at the beginning. <laughs> now, the nose, you can uh, hand stitch around it if you want. I'm going to do a sewing machine and stitch around the noses here. And then if you don't want to do either, just go ahead and glue your nose on. This is what they look like sewn. And then I'll just glue my noses onto both of my snowmen. Again, working both of these snowmen at the same time. You thought I was going to say the word simultaneously, didn't you? And I just did. <laughs> All right, we're going to decorate up. I'm using that fabric from Walmart, just ripping about a half inch or a one inch strip here. And then I'm going to just tie a little scarf around the neck of both of these. Kind of a little side knot there. I'll cut off any excess I don't want if it's too long. And we'll just kind of wrinkle and crinkle our uh, pieces here, our tails, and we'll glue them here into position in just a minute. So yeah, it's like a two for one project here because I'm like, I don't know if people are going to like this one. I don't know if people are going to like that one. I like them both. You choose, do the one you want. All right, now I'm just going to glue my fabric all into place here. Again, wrinkle and crinkle and glue it so it looks really cute and exactly how I want it to look. And I just do a little spot gluing. And again, you can use hot glue here if you want. But I like it better than them just hanging down flat. It just gives them some personality. Right, we're going to move on to this one and do the same thing. See, he's looking a little cuter now, isn't he? Especially with his eyes and his nose on. The thought of like all that batting and stuff hanging out and the wool blanket and the coloring, it doesn't look so bad now, does it? Come on, admit it. Oh, I can hear it turning. I can hear your words thinking in your brain like, I don't know. Let's work with it. So I made a little tag here. I cut two pieces of batting and ripped a piece of muslin. And I'm using these clickable stamps from Michaels and... Stamping word frosty on and I'll have a link down below for you. If you're a gluer, you can glue it all together once you're done. And I, of course, sewed around both of mine. They both say the same thing, frosty. And I've got some greenery, some red and cream twine, some rusty safety pins, the tag. And we're just going to add a little bit of greenery around our, I did two different kinds of greenery here, adding around our uh, scarves on both of our snowmen. If you have really like spindly greenery, the part that's going to lay down, cut that off and make it flat so that you can add your glue and it lays flat. You don't have to leave those spindlies up on the side you're going to glue. Just cut off that excess of the greenery right there so it lays flat. Okay? It works a lot better that way. Perfect. 
Okay, and then I'm going to add a little button here. So I'm just putting some of that crochet twine through it. So I'm going to add a little button. Just knot it off in the back and cut off the excess. So it looks like we sewed the button on where we're going to use it at. I'm going to go ahead and glue my little tag on here. Just tuck it right in there. I've got some little beaded berries uh, from Hobby Lobby. And then these are Rusty Stars. I'll have a link down below to the site. I get them. The name escapes me right now. But I bought like a 100 of them in a bag last year. Still have a bunch left. Adding my pit berries. And did I say the clickable stamps? Link down below from Michaels for you. Then we're going to add our button here. But first I want to add the twine bow. And then we're going to put the button over the twine bow. And I'm actually going to like wrinkle and crinkle that twine as well. And glue it into the place I want. Perfect. Right? Like that. Get that one glued. I'm not going to glue the other side in yet because we need to get our buttons on our snowman, right? However many buttons you want and whatever you want to use for buttons. I'm going to use some rusty safety pins here and I just kind of put them in there all catawonky and it works really cute. Just kind of just blow off the little rusty dust there. Works fine. If you don't want to use anything rusty, then don't do that. Buttons will be super cute. Little hearts, wood hearts, anything like that. And then I'll glue the twine into position on this side. And then we'll move on to our other snowman here. Again, this snowman is a little bit flatter. Where the other one is, is plumper and it kind of sits up. This sits up better. This sits up well, but you might want it more like a wall hanging or something like that. Okay, getting our greenery. Same thing, but just using a little bit of different greenery and stuff on this one to make it look a little bit different. Just bits and pieces, whatever you want to use here. And then I'm going to go ahead and I decided I need to ink this tag. So I'm going to ink the other tag in the process. And then we'll come back and do a little bit more inking again in a minute. So we're going to go ahead and glue our little puffy tag on here. Glue a couple of stars here. Everything's better in threes, right? So I have two rusty stars here at the top, but the second one is barely peekable. Uh, and then we'll add a third one on as a button. Add our twine bow, add a regular button there so that tags in place. And then I am going to add some beaded pit berries. Again, love these. Get them at uh, Hobby Lobby. I'm going to add one of the rusty stars down for, I almost did just one rusty star, but I decided I wanted to still do something of three. So one rusty star at the bottom and two rusty safety pins at the top of that. And then glue my twine into position how I want it to lay. Looking super cute. I am anxious to hear what you guys thought of these. And then I'm going to come in with some of that uh, Distress Oxide ink and Vintage Photo and just ink up around the edges a little bit so the fabric's not so flat, especially around the eyes and the nose, so it gives it a little bit of silhouette. And then I'm going to take some multi-purpose adhesive glue. And I found this fake snow at a thrift store. And I think it's what the old fake snow was. It's like um, shredded styrofoam. I like it better now than the old fake snow that is like shredded plastic. Found just one little baggie of it. And I'm just spraying on the adhesive and then just kind of sprinkling the fake snow on top. Just to, you know, it's a snowman. He's got a little snow on him. But yeah, I wish I could find this kind of shredded styrofoam snow anymore. But I don't know, maybe the plastic's more economical, I guess. I'll do it on both of my snowmans, of course. I'm having to like test my adhesive spray at first because it's kind of gummied up. So it kind of shoots out in an angle. So I got to spray it first so I know what angle to tip the can to get it onto the project and then add the little bit of snow. But once I do that, just kind of three areas or so, again, everything looks better in threes, that makes this project complete.
let's move on to our last project number three or three and three quarters since we did two in the last one <laughs> for this project you're going to need two colors of coordinating fabric and you're going to need two pieces cut for each color and they are going to be six inches in width and 12 inches tall okay and up for the sake of this video i'm going to call this obviously that's a stripe and this other one i don't know what that is i'm just going to call it a polka dot to explain how to put it together okay so to put it together you want to put right sides together you want to take one stripe one polka dot pretty sides together that's what right sides together mean if you're a gluer you're going to glue down one short edge of each of those sets of fabric okay if you're a sewer you're going to sew down one short edge on both of those sets of fabric okay so i'm doing that now again your pretty sides or right sides are together and i am back stitching here okay and now you have two long pieces that's the back here's the front again pretty sides together make sure you match up your same fabrics on both sides and now what we're going to do, gluers and sewers, you're going to glue down one long side, one short side, and glue up the other long side. You're going to leave one short side open, okay? So again, fabrics together, you're both your long strips are together now, pretty sides together, match up your fabrics of both pieces, okay? And then glue down one long side, one short side, and down one another long side, leaving the short side open, or so in that direction as I've stated. So getting this sewn here, we're gonna make a cute little bag. I know we did a cute little bag at fall, but we're gonna make this one a little bit different because we want two colors on our bag and it's so easy. Literally when I put this bag together from cutting to sewing it, five minutes. This bag would be so cute for so many things. So here's what we got, a big tube, right? Right sides together. So go ahead and now turn it so it's right side out. And now you should have two colors down on one end, all the stripes on one end, all the polka dots on the other, or whatever you choose to use. Okay, yeah, this would be so cute to actually put like a gift inside or like a gift beverage or something like that because you can adjust the length of this if you want. Now, if you're a gluer, just go ahead and glue that open end shut. I'm a sewer, obviously, so I'm going to kind of turn it in a little bit here. I don't have to, but I'm going to turn it in about a quarter of an inch, turn those raw edges in, and then I'm just going to sew along that outside edge. Don't worry, you're not going to see this, okay? But it still looks pretty, right? Just sewing down and closing that edge. Now, we're, everything, all the edges are closed. So now what we have to do, I want my stripe at the bottom, so I'm going to take that polka dot, I'm going to spread my bag apart, and I'm going to take that polka dot, and I'm going to shove it down inside the stripe of that bag so that end of that polka dot meets the bottom of that stripe bag and this is what it looks like and then you can fold down your top edge i've got it fold down about two inches and now we have a two color bag really really cute nice and easy now let's move on to the name of our bag i'm doing mine in iron on vinyl okay i will have a pdf and a png for you those of you electronic cutting machines you can cut this out in png uh but you have to clean out the insides of letters, but I'll also list the fonts for you in case you want to do it yourself. And as you see here up in the upper left corner, I have done two designs for you. So you can decide which design that you like. I'm going to rip my fabric and then iron on my iron on onto the fabric. If you don't have electronic cutting machine and you can use the PDF, you can print onto the fabric. I'll have a link down below that takes you to that to show you how to print onto fabric using the inkjet printer, okay? So here I am ironing on the design I chose. I wanted the lesser design. I was going to go for the longest time with the other one, but then decided I wanted this one uh, because that's the one I wanted. Now, if you're a gluer, you can glue on whichever choice you've made or design, and you can hand sew it on if you want some cute little stitching around it. I'm gonna take mine to the sewing machine, and voila, here it is all done and ready to go. I just kind of sewed around it to have some fun. As I was gluing this, getting glue around the edges, I decided I might wanna kind of puff this up a little bit. So I took some batting here. I originally cut two pieces for the center, and so you see me here gluing two pieces of batting in the center of that fabric. I've got about a minute before that Fabri-Tac sets up, so I've got plenty of time to get my batting in there. But then once I put this onto the bag and I kind of smushed down the outer edge of that one fabric, it was way too quilted looking. It was too fat. You'll see here it just looks too fat. So then I flip it open and I pull one of the batting pieces off, and then it's much better. It just gives a nice, cute little quilted look. Just like that, nice and easy. Taking those clickable stamps again and putting gingerbread mix down here. 
And I made the same little tag like we did on our snowman projects here. So you could do the same thing and glue it all together or sew it. I'm going to go ahead and just add a little glue here on the batting so that stays together. And then here's what it looks like all sewn and ready to go. Just gives it a little bit of a quilted look again. And now I'm going to fill the inside of my bag. And I'm going to actually wrap some rocks in the middle of some stuffing so that you don't feel the rocks on the uh, bottom of the bag. I just don't like that look. And then I'm going to stuff it about three quarters full. Or I don't like that feel, I guess I should say. Stuff it about three quarters full. Now you're going to see a little stuffing there and I want to cover that. So I'm going to take just a couple of pieces of thin muslin from Dollar Tree and I'm just going to kind of glue it together. I'm going to fold it together to make a smaller swatch and then I'm going to, you can see here gluing it, adding some glue on the outside and then I'm going to just glue this to the top of that batting and kind of smush it down in around the sides to cover that batting up because yeah, when we close the bag, it's going to be open a little bit. And I don't want the person to see stuffing. So I'm taking some really thick twine here. Again, get from Walmart, making a really big bow underneath where I downturn that fabric there. And I have these gingerbread cookie cutters I got off Etsy. I'll have a link down below for you. I'm going to use some red and cream twine here first and kind of attach it to that cookie cutter so that it makes it, uh, you know, hangs well. And then I'm going to put it right up underneath the center of the knot of that bow of the twine. I want it to hang nice and flat here. Kind of tie a half knot, or maybe I do a full knot. Making sure I'm right at the center of that bow. Really tight. And then I add a bell. These are ornaments that came out last year from Walmart. They don't even jingle. They're from the mini ornament section. I add the bell to it, the remainder of that twine, and then tie a bow underneath. Okay, and then I'm going to cut off the excess where I want it. And then I'm going to add some red and white beads to the red and cream twine. Get it the length I want and tie a knot at the end and cut off the excess so the beads don't fall off. This project was really quick and easy. The five minutes it took to put it together, maybe 15 minutes or 20 minutes to put all the rest of the fun stuff on it. Again, would be so cute if you did an actual like sugar cookie mix in a jar and put the jar inside or wrapped someone's favorite beverage would be really cute. I'm gonna take Distress Oxide ink in Vintage Photo and I wanna ink around my tag, of course, just like we did on the last project. I'll do the backside as well in case it gets seen and around the edges. And then I'm gonna ink around the Mrs. Claus Cookie Company so it kinda adds like a little silhouette and helps that to pop up off a little bit more. I like that a little bit better it's preference if you want to and I'll go ahead and just ink the rest of the bag just a little bit all right and I'm going to ink the top of where that muslin is we covered that stuffing and then I'm just going to take a bulb pen you can get these at like Amazon or Walmart or sewing section used to carry it that kind of thing and I'm just going to pin what kind of fake uh mix this is to the top of my bag cute and then I've got some real cinnamon sticks here nice long one these are about five inches long and I'm going to add that right behind that big twine bow. Cute. And then if you want, you can bring in some shimmer. I'll have the link down below to that that I love to use. And that makes this project complete. Hope you enjoyed all the projects I came up with today. Leave me a comment down below and let me know which one was your favorite. And number two, let me know which snowman design you liked best because I want to make some for a craft show and I don't want to make the wrong snowman. <laughs> Need your opinion on that. Please give this video a thumbs up. It really helps my channel to grow. And if you walked in here for the first time or you came over from Emily or Wendy or Patty's channel and you're just checking things out, if you're digging what you saw, make sure before you click off, you hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on another video from me. Remember, I'm going to have the playlist link down in the description box and pinned in my comments so that you can go check out the other ladies' fabulous, fabulous designs. They are so multi talented. Thank you ladies for joining with me in this collab. It was certainly my pleasure to be among such talent and such beautiful souls. Before I go, I'm going to leave you with one final thought. It's not about works or what you do in your life with what God has given you. 
And it's not about works that brings about his favor into your life. When you need God to help you with a difficult situation, it's not an uncommon thought to possibly remind God in prayer about everything you've done for him, especially the things he's asked you to do, and hope that this would bring about his blessing to see you through whatever you're facing. But in reality, even though God trusts you to carry on with whatever he's asked you to do, you you just can't. You can't try and use that to gain his favor. It doesn't work like that in God's eyes, but it doesn't also mean that you just give up hope with what you need either. In your relationship with God, it's not a this for that situation. You have to accept the fact that he made you. So he's the parent of you and you are his child. You love him. You place your trust in him. Whatever he asks of you, you do. And no matter what, you must fully understand and know that he will never leave you. He will never betray you and he will always stand with you. He loves you more than anything. His his ways are higher, his plans are greater, and his path is what leads you home. Also, don't put conditions on your relationship with God and don't think that you deserve this or that. In reality, God owes you nothing. He actually gave the life of his son as a gift for you and asked simply for your love in return. He also asked for a commitment to follow him and to understand that he knows what's best for you. So whatever you're facing, it's not a time to barter with God. It's simply a time to release your situation to him. You don't have to earn his help, but you must keep in mind that however God needs to repair what you're going through will happen in the exact way that he feels is necessary. You need to accept that whatever he does is done with your best interest in mind. A parent always does what they feel is best for their child, whether it brings about a complete healing or whether it's best to just let them walk through it, no matter how difficult it may be. So however your races run to cross that finish line, there's no choice but to trust in God who carries you. It's okay to be anxious or afraid or unsure of what is to come, but know that Jesus represents your world. And if the days get hard and you aren't sure you'll make it around the next turn, he's got you. You may not understand the road you're facing, but always look ahead with hope and know that he will comfort you at every turn. And if you stumble or fall, God will pick you up and carry you to the finish line as you hold tightly to him. No bargaining chip or negotiation is required. I thank you for sharing your time with me and I'll talk with you again soon. Bye.